פרק המויכר בייס קור, דף קה, ספונסר דה רפואה שלם אפור, חגית יוכבת בס חנה. We begin with the Mishnah. The previous Mishnah explained the difference between a seller stipulation, base core, the Midas HaChevel, a sale for an exact amount of land, and the stipulation, base core, Hein Chaser Hein Yaser, a sale for an approximate amount of land. This Mishnah discusses the law when the seller combines the two contradictory statements in one. Which part is primary, the first or the second? The Gemara brings three different opinions. Number one, our Mishnah follows the opinion of Ben Nanus, who holds the second part is primary. If, for example, he stipulates, Mi da bechevel ani mocher lach, hein chaser hein yaser, the second part of his statement negates the first, making it a sale for an, an approximate amount of land. Number two, Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel and Rabbi Yossi hold it is questionable which part of his statement is primary. Therefore, Mamana mutl besafek chokim, the law is divide. One rented his bathhouse for a year, Stipulating the rental fee is 12 golden coins for a year, one per month. That year was a leap year, requiring a payment for an additional month. Rabbi Shim Gamliel Rabbi Yossi hold, they split the cost of the extra month. Mamana mutl b'safek chokin. They do not consider the second statement as definitive, as Benanis does. This proof could be refuted. It is possible that in general they agree with Ben Nanis that the second part of the statement is definitive. This case is unique because it is unclear if the second part is a retraction or explanation of the first. When he stipulated a gold dinar l'chodesh, perhaps he retracted, stating, if it turns out to be a leap year, he wants to be paid for the additional month. On the other hand, since the law is schirus ena mishtalemes el lipsov, rent must be paid only at the end of the rental period, the second part of this statement may require the tenant to pay monthly. Since they were in doubt as to the owner's intent, they decided to divide the rental fee. However, our case being clearly contradictory, they would rule like Benanis. Therefore, Rav teaches they disagree in our case as well. Their doubt is which part of the statement is primary. Number three, Shmuel brings a third opinion, the Chachomim. Hold, halech achar pochos shabuloshonos. Follow whichever is detrimental to the buyer. Although they are also uncertain of the seller's intent, the disputed property remains with the one in possession. Our Mishnah refers to a case where the buyer paid before a discrepancy in the amount sold was discovered. Since the seller is in possession of both the land and money, Yado al Yona, he has the advantage. If the land is slightly smaller than the size stipulated, the court applies the part of the statement, Hein Chaser Hein Yaser, allowing for a larger discrepancy. If it is slightly larger, the court applies Kemida Bachevel. The Gemara digresses to determine if Shmuel holds like Benanis. The Gemara brings two contradictory cases. Number one, if the seller stipulates, Kur bishloshimani mochelach, I am selling you a kur of grain for 30 sloim, he sold it all as one unit. Therefore, until the buyer acquires the whole amount, both can renege. If he added a saw for a seller, each saw is a separate entity. Shmuel holds the buyer acquires each saw individually. Apparently, Shmuel holds like Ben Nanis. The first and second part of his statement contradict Shmuel holding the second part as definitive. Number two, Shmuel holds they divide the 13th month when the owner of the bathhouse collects the rent in the middle of the month. For the first half of the month, he cannot collect because the tenant is in possession of the money. The burden of proof lies with the owner. For the second half of the month, the tenant must pay rent since the bathhouse is the possession of the owner. 
However, if the owner came at the beginning of the month, the tenant pays in full. At the end of the month, he pays nothing. Whereas according to Ben Anas, he pays since the second part of his statement is definitive. The Gemara concludes Shmuel does not hold like Ben Anas, but like Rabbi Shim Gamliel and Rabbi Yossi. Therefore, where the seller stipulated Kur Bishloshim, the Sob, the seller, Shmuel in doubt which part of his statement primary, ruled the buyer retains whatever he acquired. Rav Huna brings a proof that Rav holds like Benanis. If a seller stipulates for an item he is selling mea ma'e istera, the buyer pays an istera, which is four ma's less. Rav Huna did not prove it from the case of the bathhouse because Rav may understood the second part of the owner's statement as an explanation of the first. He wants to be paid monthly, not just at the end of the year. If you're enjoying Daffin 5, please click on the link below, subscribe, and become a sponsor. Thank you.